Uh, I am at the shop right now. We are mixing up some 2K poly here. <coughs> Excuse me. We are making a color. Oh, what is the name? HC174 by Benjamin Moore. Um, I'm going to be mixing up about, what is it, 350 grams of base, and then we're going to add 50% hardener to that. But just kind of wanted to show you guys what we do when we're mixing and how I do it. Um, as you can see, I've got a cup because we are mixing a small amount. I just use plastic cups. Got a gram scale here. I do everything in grams. I'm going to kind of lean this up here and then see how this goes as far as talking you guys through everything. All right, so my formula is calling for 336, sorry, 337.6 grams of base. And that's what I have here in this cup. And then I need 5.7 grams of FBU 16. The colorant system that we use, as you can see here, this is the Circa colorant system. And FBU 16 is a, I can't really see it here, I'll do that universal black so what i'm gonna do i've been using these all day but typically when i haven't we've got a little knob right up here i can either put a drill on there or i've got a handle that i can put on here and get that stirred up but i've been using them all day so i'm just gonna go with it so my scale is reading 337.6 and i'm gonna add 5.7 to that so 337.6 plus 5.7 343.3 is where I need my scale to go. So I'm gonna kind of spin it. I like to get it right up front. And then I'm just gonna open my tip slowly. And just kind of keep an eye on it. So I'm at 341. I'm gonna slow down. 342.6, almost there. We're at 343. So I'm at 343.5.6. It's kind of rolling once it settles out. So, all right, black's in. So now we're gonna go over to the next colorant, which is FBU7. So I'm gonna pull up seven, and you can see really easily numbered. Seven is going to be a violet paste so 343.6 and I need 0.4 grams so clearly I'm gonna go to 344 so again I should I mixed them all this morning but so I'm just kind of giving it just in case so I need 0.4 grams of this so we gotta be super careful because we don't wanna overdo it. That's 2.2 grams. I think we need one more little drop. Bingo, 344. I like to wipe them off in between, it keeps them a little cleaner. So FBU seven, check. Now we're going FBU six, which is the universal green. We're going to add a little green in here. We need 1.4 grams of this one. So I'm going to take my scale to 345.4. Here we go. far so good we've got three more colorants we need FBU 10 which is going to be a kind of hard to see it but cold yellow we're making like an off gray is kind of what we're making here but so FBU 10 we need 0.4 
we're going to go to 345.8. These smaller ones are really kind of tricky. You just got to go real slow. Point six, that's 2.2 .2 grams. One more, just, all right. 345.8, I've told you, all right. FBU one, number one color is an oxide yellow. You can see FBU one and oxide yellow. We need 2.7 grams plus 2.7, so 348.5. Three forty-eight point five. Here we go. Three forty-eight point five. Almost point two. Point four. Three forty-eight point five. And the final colorant we're gonna add FBU three, which is red oxide. This one may changes it quick. Now, in a standard case, if you are mixing up gallons or gallon and a half, depending on how much you're spraying, uh, a couple things to remember. This is a 2K polyurethane. Your pot life is gonna be right at two hours, which means you need to get it through your gun or your pump in two hours before it starts setting up. So you don't wanna over mix and end up throwing a bunch away. But so, with us making only about 350 grams, one thing we have to keep in mind is we're making a small amount, so just a little bit can move it a lot. Whereas if you were making a large amount, you wouldn't be worried about 0.1 grams or 0.2 grams of any colorant. That's not gonna move it very much in a gallon, but it will push it quite a bit in something volume size of this amount. So FBU3 is an oxide red. We just really need 0.1 gram to go into here. Not much, so we really just want to drop. So three, the scale is reading 348.6. So I just wanted to read 0.7. Didn't move it. We're gonna do one more drop. All right. That gave me 0.1 gram of red oxide. So I'm gonna take my trusty paint stick here and we're all mixed up. We've got a total of 348.7 grams. If we add everything up here on a scale, that's gonna equal 348.7. So what we'll do is we'll mix this up and once we get it all mixed up, we'll do a little draw out on our, with our finger uh, on a card that we use. Now, knowing that it's never gonna set up on the card, and then once you add the hardener, it will, I mean, ever so slightly change your color, but not that, enough, not that much. But it won't be exactly the same. So, we've already done this color. I've got a card right here. You can see we have modified, it says HC174 modified, and you'll notice two lines. This was the original. I had to make a little bit more, so I put it here, and now I'm gonna make a look, put another dab, like probably right in that area, so we can compare it to the original project formula that we did. So I write everything down during the day and then usually I'll take it home at the end of the night and I put it in an Excel spreadsheet so I have it down the road. If paper gets thrown away or the customer calls six months, a year or two years later and says, oh yeah, you remember those cabinets you painted? I need to get some more and I want that same color. This kind of 
helps. And I don't have to rely on the paint store to do it. I can do it all here in on site. And if I'm just doing a little bit, I can do a little bit. Kind of looks like a milkshake. If you'll notice, we're kind of mixing the color in. So you want to make sure you get it really mixed up. With the Circa colorants and the way 2K polys are engineered, you don't really need massive amounts of stir agitation. They are really fine colorants and they suspend really well. So just doing some figure eights and stirring up and then scraping the side of the cup will get you as good as you need to be for a 2K poly. Uh, let's see. So we're just kind of stirring it all up, making sure we're agitated all the way around. And then once we get this stirred up, usually what I'll do is, like I said, I'm gonna do the drawdown just to make sure it matches our previous color. I'll let the guys know. And I like to put a piece of tape across here of how much is in here, the total base, and then how much hardener they're going to need. I go ahead and put that on here just in case they get busy and forget what I told them. And then I'll cover it with a rag. And then once they're ready to spray it, they can just come over here and grab it, mix it and go to town. So I'm really fond of it's 20 ounce cups. I just buy them at Sam's. Um, you can use normal mixing containers if you want. Um, personally, I think these work just as good and you don't have to worry about cleaning them out every time. You can just, you know, once you get it poured up into your cup gun on this, and I've got some paper ones that we like to use for mixing a gallon and a half. Once we get it in the Kremlin or in the cup gun, get our thinner rinsed out of it, pour it in there, we just throw it away. Um, some people would say that's not very proper. Um, I don't know if I wouldn't, if I would agree with that. It's dried. It's just saves the solvent of using mass amounts of lactic thinner or acetone to go ahead and clean out your uh, mixing bucket. So anyways, all right. So I think we're pretty mixed up. So I'm gonna, I wanna get it all over my finger. So use my glove finger, take a dip here and you can see what I'm gonna do is basically I'm gonna just do a little dab right here. All right, and then I'm gonna let that dry out a minute. Get my fingers cleaned off here. All right, so now we can take this and we can kind of set it to the side here. We'll let that dry for just a minute. I was gonna show you guys these uh, five quart buckets that I use to mix uh, when we're making anything larger than uh, quart, half gallon. I'll use these large buckets here. We keep these on hand. Uh, another great thing to have if you are considering making your own colors is to invest in a color wheel. These things are amazing. Um, I'm probably not the best at colors. I've always depended on the paint stores to do that. So this is a really just a quick reference. If you know something's too red or too purple, I can switch it out and know what to add in there to take it out. All right, so I've let it dry down. It's not dried down 100%, but it's dried down enough for me to get the color. Uh, and what we're looking at here, you'll take a look. I'm trying to get it zoomed in. All right, so we have got, let me set my phone down so I can show you. I need to figure out how to do videos better, but this was the first batch we did a couple weeks ago. This was the second batch we did last week. And then we had one door that was kind of acting up, so we want to redo it. So basically what I like to do, it's the white throws you off, personally, in my opinion, it's what I think. So I like to come in here, and then I'm gonna look at it like this, okay? I'm gonna close off any of the white, but I need it to ride on, and I just don't want to see any type of variance as far as color goes wet dry you might see a little bit but if the color's good then we are good to go so basically what i'm going to do from here is i'm going to take this like i told you i'll go ahead and do that put this back down i'm going to take my one piece of tape 
and we had 348.7. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna write HC174, 348.7 grams of white base. Because the white base and the clear base on the 2K polyurethanes both take different hardeners. So you always want to make sure, if you're not the one that's going to be mixing it, you want to make sure there's no issues between the guy that's going to be mixing it and if you made the colors. So what you want to do is just be very clear and make sure they know that this is a white base, so use the hardener for the white base. If it's a clear base, you write clear base, and they'll do that. So, but I like to go ahead and go one step further just so we don't have any issues. So I know that the hardener for the white base is the CT087. So I'm gonna put CT087 equals, we have 348.7. So I'm gonna turn 348.7 divided by two. 174 grams. So 174G hardener. If I can write correctly. All right, so that's on there. So I'm gonna put that right below it. All right, and then, so, kind of show you guys what I like to do. All right, get a little close there, sorry about that. All right, HC174 equals 348.7 G of white base. And then right down here, CT087 equals 174 G hardener. All right, that way my guys know that what they're gonna do is they're gonna take this cup, they're gonna put it right back on the scale, okay? And then they're gonna zero it out. They're gonna pour in 140, oops, 174 grams of hardener and then up to 20 parts of reducer should they need it. Typically you will if you're gonna go through a cup gun. If you're going through a pump, probably don't need it. Maybe just a little bit, 10%. But anyways, we kind of go with a feel and how the product looks as we're mixing it once we get the hardener in there. Anyways, that is a pretty basic daily operation of doing your own custom colors. Uh, I've already put in the time of making the color. We just had to break it down from mixing up small amounts to large amounts to again, smaller amounts. So just simple Excel spreadsheet. You can also do a video on that if you guys wanna see it. Uh, other than that, I was going to do a quick run on the colorants. There you go. All 16. What I really like about them is they're labeled FBU1 through FBU16. Makes it really simple when you're trying to learn the formula, when you're trying to know what the colorants, you don't really need to know the colors. That will come over time. You'll learn that 16 is universal black and 9 is a deep black eight is a universal white all that stuff comes over time but it makes it really simple by the excel spreadsheet that they have as well as they're all just color at number one so other than that hey hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, i really want to do more as far as tutorials and helping you guys learn how to make custom colors when it comes to 2k polyurethanes and mixing them and spraying them out let me know what you guys want to see uh, I would love to hear from everybody what you thought of this video. So leave a comment. Let me know. Hope everyone's having a great day. Oh, it's Friday. Heck yeah. So everyone have an awesome weekend as well. Uh, enjoy the sun if you got it. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the cool because it's supposed to be like 110 here in Oklahoma this weekend. So I'll probably be by the pool with a beer in my hand. Other than that, everybody have a great weekend and we will talk to you later.